Phase three, the swing, is the incorporation of a series of movements that have to occur correctly in order to have a short, compact swing through the zone. The first thing you've got to be able to do once you're getting ready to swing is you have to understand that you're trying to drive the knob inside the path of the ball. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a ball that's on a tee so you can understand the relationship to the knob and the ball coming into the zone. We've placed our ball literally right down the middle of the plate because we're going to talk about hitting the ball up the middle. Many times we get the questions of where do you actually focus prior to the pitcher putting the ball into play? And our players are taught to focus on the entire defensive area. In other words, where they're almost looking through the pitcher. It's a wide focus. As the pitcher starts her motion and she gets ready to throw, we then go ahead and go down to a fine focus at the release point that you have designated on deck. So you've done your timing of your stride based on her fastest pitch. You've done your timing and your focusing on deck, not to mention all your mental training and preparation. Because remember, when you get in the box, you're just going to see the ball hit the ball. You're in the reaction mode. So now we've got the ball that has come down the middle of the plate. The first half, your eyes are doing all the homework. Your eyes are telling your brain what it sees, what they see. First half, try to pick up spin, trajectory of the pitch. It's going to help you in terms of knowing where that ball is going to end up. And remember, you only need about 15 feet to go ahead and react and carry out the swing. Many of us as softball players, we have a tendency to be out in front too much when we make contact. And when we're in this area, fully extending, we have no power. If somebody were to go ahead and resist off of me right here and I would try to resist with my barrel, I wouldn't be able to keep that barrel out there. I don't have much strength. But if I do a good job of being in a power position when I get ready to swing, where there's a slight bend in the elbow and a bend in the wrist, I'm going to be able to have more sting on the ball when I make contact. So let's go ahead and talk about what happens phase three when I get ready to swing at the pitch coming down the middle of the plate. Phase one, short, quick stride. The distance of that stride is based on the height of the player. Some are two or three inches. Others are six or seven inches. It varies player to player. Just be sure it's quick and short. Stride foot heel has to land on the ground. So you've got a good, strong base in your balance when you're hitting. Phase two, you got to go ahead and snap those hips. They start to open first in your pivot phase of the swing, phase two. Phase three is now an unlocking of the shoulder, elbow, and wrist. We're in the upside down V position. Hands are at the top of the strike zone or even po possibly a little bit higher, personal preference. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm always going to be able to try and keep the barrel slightly higher than the hands. But in putting that barrel on the plane of the ball, the ball creates a plane. I want to be able to get the club head on that plane as soon as possible and carry that club head through the plane, making contact through the ball and follow through. The key in phase three, the actual swinging of the bat through the zone, is to get the knob of the bat inside the path of the ball. So the ball travels in. I'm always amazed at when coaches say throw the knob at the ball. Well remember we're going to make contact right here. If I'm throwing the knob at the ball, I'm putting myself in a pretty vulnerable position. I've already started to cast out. So we teach our players. Now remember when we're in the swing position, the relationship between the hands and the body are still pretty close because what I've done is I've drawn the knob inside the path of the ball. I still have a bend in my elbow and a bend in my wrist. Now when I get ready, I've made my decision that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get ready to swing. You'll notice that my front toe is slightly closed, not open. I don't want to commit those hips early when I'm in phase one. Snap those hips open. Now it's ready to go. I'm now I'm ready to go ahead and swing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock the shoulder starts to come out, but my body is not rotating away from the ball. 
So my shoulder starts to unlock, but I'm not rotating away from the bar. The shoulder unlocks. The knob of the bat is going inside the path of the ball. Now I'm going to get ready to unlock the elbows. Make contact with the ball. Both eyes on the contact area. You'll notice I have a slight bend still in my arms. My wrists are still cocked. Once I get ready to make contact, I make contact, extend through the ball with that wrist snap, and then follow through.